So you want to get a Bengal cat. Now, as a Bengal cat owner, too, Timon and Simba, I feel I can probably say a fair amount about it this, especially because I'm pretty knowledgeable when it comes to kitties, as is known. But there are some kind of basic need-to-know things and things you will have to have that you might not necessarily need with other cats. But the first off is if you're going to get a Bengal, like if you're going to get any purebred breed, get it from a reputable breeder who knows what they're doing, has preferably been doing it for a while, and has a wide gene pool with the kitties. Because this avoids them having any sort of heterarity, genetic issues. Because you don't want that. This is much more important with some other breeds rather than the Bengal. Because the Bengals tend to be pretty good on generally very healthy breeds with really no medical issues connected to the breed specifically. Sweetie. Stop it. So generally you do not have to worry about special health risks that come with having a Bengal. But again, make sure there's a wide gene pool and it comes from a reputable breeder like with any other breed of cats. Now, Bengals are an extremely high energy cat breed. They also tend to be pretty territorial. So they are going to need lots of space to run around, lots of space to climb, to jump, to explore, and they're going to need to be played with an awful lot. You're going to have to get a lot of toys, both so that they can play by themselves and that you can play with them. Get laser pointers, get string toys, get a lot of toys, you're going to have to play with them. On average, I'd say minimum 15 minutes a day, minimum, is how much you want to play with your cat. If you do not play with them, at least somewhat often, they are going to wreck things. <laughs> they are going to kick the crap out of them, beat things up, etc. Hell, they might even try to like take things off of things and hide them. I have had these bangles, not her, him, there he is, bangle boy. I have had them steal blankets off of things, they have taken tablecloths off of things, they will take shit and hide shit, they are just, they will get into shit, especially if you are not playing with them enough, so you have to play with them enough. This cannot be stressed enough, you have to play with them a lot, they are a super high energy breed. And then again, in with the territorial thing, because these cats are territorial, usually it's not the greatest idea to have them in a household with a shit ton of cats they might pee on things, especially if they're males. So if you're going to get one, especially if it's a boy, definitely make sure you get it fixed, neutered, whatever, very, very early on, and discourage any outside of the litter box peeing. Period. Like, always. Like, these guys, these guys have a peeing problem. They will pee on things. They will. So if you wind up with a bangle who does pee on everything, then basically you're gonna want an enzymatic cleaner, and a lot of it. Other things that help generally with that, see he's being a little shit here now, playing with things and taking things and moving things around, is getting things that are help calm them down. There is calming col kitty collars, calming kitty collars to calm them down. There is air infusers that are filled with cat pheromones, there are bottle sprays for it, stuff like that. Hell, if you even want to, you can go and you can get them put on medicine to help with it at a vet. That might not necessarily completely get rid of it, but yeah, so that that is one thing. Uh, Bengals also, from the two I have, I've noticed they are incredibly picky. Timon is the worst of the two. They only like certain foods, they only like certain litters, etc. But this is more to the specific cat. So they are a rambunctious breed that can be a little on the picky side and might pee on things. She'd a pretty, she'd a pretty bang. See, very, very handsome breed. All these wonderful spots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he doesn't like being held, but yeah, there you go. You get to see his pretty, pretty spots. So they are a very, very, very handsome breed, and that's why they're fairly popular. But they do come from a semi-wild breeding. Bengals are typically bred partly wild, I guess you could say. Not really, but partly, because that's why they have their spots. Is Because if you look at them, what do they resemble? Yeah, they, they resemble ocelots, servals, Asian leopards, that sort of thing. And they do come from that lineage. They do. So they are a little on the wild side. So because of that, they do have some behavior that is a little bit wild. So they will hunt things, and also because of that, if you have a bangle and you're having it outside, it will decimate 
the outdoor populace of rodents and whatnot. It will kill them left, right, and center. You will have dead rats, dead birds, dead mice, everywhere. Especially if they leave you presents. So, I really would not recommend them being outdoor cats if you aren't alright with them completely decimating the population out there. Other things with Bengals is there's this thing called a cat wheel. Um, they're pretty much made with Bengals in mind. It's a giant hamster wheel that a cat can run on. And every video you look up on YouTube is probably going to feature Bengals running on these things. Because, like I said, they're basically made with Bengals in mind. And that is because of the high energy that is a bangle. So something like that is an incredibly good idea. So I would recommend all those things, but they are extraordinarily expensive. And if you play with them enough, they're not really necessary, but they are a good idea, and I would recommend them. Another thing is, these are a breed of cat that you can and actually should be walking. Especially if they like to pee on things. Because what this will do is they'll go inside and they'll be like, the neighborhood kitties piss on this bush, so I'm gonna piss on this bush instead of pissing inside. That's basically what happens. It also gets out some of their energy and their urge to explore out into the world. And so these are also great cats if you want to actually be taking an emerald walk. And hell, if you wanted to, and you have the right bangle temperament for it, you could take them out climbing with you if you wanted to. Like, obviously don't take them on hard ass trails and stuff, but you could, and there are people who do that. But if you are going to do that, you need to get a proper cat harness. You should never, ever, 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 ever walk a cat on a collar and leash. You have to get at least a little harness like this. This is not the greatest harness out there. There are better ones. But this is your basic ass cat harness. This is the minimum you should be using. Never walk a cat on a cat collar, but if you have a bangle, get one of these. If you want a bangle, get one of these. Because you're better off walking it than not walking it. But, like any other animal, you will have to basically teach it how to walk on a leash. Because chances are they're not going to like it too much when you first start doing it. But after a while, they'll probably be like, oh my god, I love it, you need a leash. So I would highly recommend that. Like, very highly. But, I guess, to just cap, since I want to keep this somewhat a short video, to do just a little cap on these cats, they are high energetics, so you're going to have to play with them, you're going to have to have a lot of time to play with them, and to possibly clean up after them, because they are going to make a mess. They are a breed you can walk. They don't generally have any real health concerns, and they will get along, for the most part, with other animals, kids, and whatnot, but that depends on when you adopt them. If you adopt them as a kitten, no problems. If you adopt them as an adult, rocky waters possibly. But I would not ever recommend a bangle for someone who has no experience with a cat because they are a high demand high energy cat who may cause you a lot of problems if you have no idea what you're doing <laughs> so basically don't get this cat if you've never owned a cat it's if it's for people who are well versed in handling kitties so so you want a bangle i i, I do recommend bangles though i do recommend owning bangles because they are Beautiful, 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 beautiful cats. There are other cat breeds that have the beautiful spotting that they do. There are. There are many. One of the more popular examples is like the Savannah cats, but Savannah cats are much more wild than a Bengal. Only thing I would say though, because I've seen a lot of videos of this online, do not adopt a serval, but it's not a domestic cat breed. If you want to spot a cat, get a Bengal, maybe get a Savannah. Don't get a serval. That is a wild cat. Don't do that. If you want a pretty spotted kitty, Bengal will dig up perfectly fine. And they're not too huge at cats either. They are muscular though. They are very, very muscular, very, very tough. They can kick the shit out of stuff. They're very, very tough. Very thick, muscular, lean kitties. 